There are different seasons of growth in our business and knowing which one that we're in in any given moment helps us actually be where we're at. It gives our brain context, which our brains really love. Other ways they start to wig out. (laughs) It makes sense of why something feels hard or slow or chaotic or confusing. And overall, knowing your season of growth eliminates a layer of unnecessary mind drama. The drama that says this shouldn't be like this or the drama that makes normal business experiences into some sort of unforgivable flaw in who you are as a human being. No. Welcome to Sincerely Future You, a podcast that helps ambitious women like you make decisions today with the future you in mind. Hi, Hapsters. I am here to update you on what's going on. I think it's so important for you to know what I'm learning right now and where this train is going because any coach that I hire, I expect them to be leveling up as I'm leveling up in their program. I expect them to be educating themselves, to be living in breakthrough. And so that's what I strive to do at all times. And right now I'm in a new mastermind. I am all for one coach at a time. I definitely believe that you should always have one mentor that you're listening to and that you're learning from at at a time. I really constrain there because otherwise you can get really distracted. You can end up pulling yourself in two different directions, feeling confused unnecessarily. But while there are coaches that I will be with for the long haul in some capacity, Brooke Castillo is one of those for me. I am always learning from her. Stacy was a great mentor for me in for a year and a half. And I do think that I have more to learn from her, but one of my goals for 2023 was to pursue a more 50, 50 balance of my masculine and feminine energies. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry because I'm learning about it too. Both Brooke and Stacy are very masculine in their approach to business and success. And I actually think that that's the way that I grew up. You know, I learned about business. I learned about success from my dad and he has a very masculine energy, right? Women and men can have either masculine or feminine energies. It really has nothing to do with your gender. Um, but masculine energy, what I'm talking about in terms of Brooke and Stacy, my previous mentors, they're very firm. They're very clear, disciplined, analytical, goal-oriented, rational, achievement-driven, strategy-based, and just driven in general. And most of my life, I've defined success in these terms. So when I sought them out, it made sense to me. Everything that they said, it was just, they were clear mentors that I knew I wanted to hire. Whereas this year, I decided to explore working with a coach who uses a more feminine approach to success. Neither of these are good or bad. They're actually both good qualities. I just wanted to expand what success sounded like to me. So my coach now, Melanie, she uses terms like consensual, accessible, nurturing, creative, intuitive, ease, beauty, healing, open, intimate, slow, community, receiving. And I'm not going to lie, you guys, this has actually been hard work to rewire my brain. I thought it would feel softer, but my brain is tripping up left and right as I reconsider the best way to get myself and my clients from where they are to where they want to go. Shout out to Melanie Childers and the other bad bitches in the Bad Bitch Mastermind. I enjoy this name so much. It makes me giggle. And it also expands my world. I look forward to evolving my practices and my teachings to be more me and to find the middle ground. And I'm just giving you a heads up. This is what is happening. Okay, before we jump into the episode, I want to tell you about a way for you to come and get some results through action instead of just consumption when you're listening to the podcast. I'm going to start a monthly coaching call with Jess. It's going to be the second Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. 
So that is next week, April 11th. Are you going to be there? Get ready. The link to this for you to join is going to be in the show notes. Uh, I'm going to be doing this monthly and I really am excited. I'm excited to be coaching some new faces. I'm excited for those of you who are not yet ready for happening sessions, but you're trying to prepare to get ready to get in the room. Maybe you just started a business or you're thinking about it. This is a place for you to come and get that coaching for free to kind of bridge that gap between where you're at and where you want to go, which is in the room with the other hapsters getting it done. Okay. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about seasons of growth. What does this mean? There are different seasons of growth in our business and knowing which one that we're in, in any given moment helps us actually be where we're at. It gives our brain context, which our brains really love. Other ways they start to wig out. (laughs) It makes sense of why something feels hard or slow or chaotic or confusing. And overall, knowing your season of growth eliminates a layer of unnecessary mind drama. The drama that says this shouldn't be like this or the drama that makes normal business experiences into some sort of unforgivable flaw in who you are as a human being. No, I'm going to talk about eight different seasons of business growth today. And these probably aren't all of them. These are just the ones that I have identified on the road to a million dollars in business for me and for my clients. Like I said, knowing what stages we're in will also help us make high level decisions, not to just do what comes naturally. Um, after listening to this episode, I want you to begin to use this high quality question. What is my growth right now? Will this decision evolve me? Will it get me closer to the skill or self-concept that I want to gain? I'm constantly asking myself that question and it helps you decide between two two options, two paths for your business that maybe are both important, but which one is the priority right now? Which one is the decision that makes sense for my season of growth? And that is why I do not spend a lot of time, you know, waffling between decision and decision. I know my season of growth and that informs my high quality decisions for my business. So we can just get right back to it, getting results. Okay. So season number one is deciding and planning. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is the season where maybe you are starting a brand new business and you just are overwhelmed with all of the things, right? You're like, okay, what am I going to do? What, what is it going to look like? How do I get more clients? And you're overwhelmed. Just be where you're at. You just have decisions to make. These decisions are for me are so clear and obvious. And I help my clients make all those decisions and get through that deciding and planning phase very quickly. We usually make their decisions for the year in about one or two weeks. Decisions and planning, if you don't know that you're in that phase and you don't know that that phase really shouldn't take that long, you can live there for a long time. Before I was a business coach, I wanted to do a blog and I had no idea how to start a blog. I knew nothing about anything and I didn't even really know how to make a decision in my business because I didn't even think of it as a business. So what did I do? I researched. Ooh, you guys, deciding and planning is not the same as researching. Researching is a black hole. There is no timeline for it. There is no season of researching, right? It is just a place where you go to kind of make your brain maybe feel like suddenly you'll feel ready or safe or those buzzwords that we like to feel that don't really exist in entrepreneurship. Deciding and planning requires that you set a deadline, set a goal, and then create a plan for yourself. That is what this plan looks like. For us in happening sessions, we are deciding and planning using our impossible goals. And then we go ahead and we do more deciding and planning the last week of the month for the next month, every month through our failure collection worksheet. Um, So I, I have talked about failure collection before and what we plan for that. So you can go and actually listen to that episode called collecting fails. Um, 
So deciding and planning, this is a very simple phase of growth, but it's really important that you know that decision, there's no right decisions. You guys, you just go in, you set a deadline for yourself. You make the decisions, you set the plan. A lot of the questions that are going to come up for you can't be answered until you get to those other phases. And this is something that I really, really am an expert in. And it has helped me understand like, what questions do I have in my brain that can actually be set on the nightstand while I'm in this phase of growth for me? And I know that those those questions will be answered once I move into that next phase, okay? So deciding and planning are, is going to bring up a lot of questions for you. Don't worry. All you need to understand here is what is my goal, by when, and what am I trying to create here? What are the results that I'm trying to create, okay? That's season of growth number one. Season of growth number two is experimenting and failing. And this whole episode was inspired by the fact that right now, the March class of happening sessions is coming in. And I can already tell that in the room, people are in these different seasons of growth. And what I don't want to happen is over the next couple of months, some people are in a season that may be a little bit more like flowy and easy because they're reaping because they've done other work. They've been through the other seasons, whereas other people are coming in and they're just have to go right into the, this season number two, which my personal favorite experiment and fail. This is where things feel probably the most uncomfortable. It's because we just have to be in the thick of figuring it out in the thick of falling on our face, getting back up, tweaking, falling on our face, getting back up, tweaking. And that experiment and fail when you're comparing yourself to someone who's in a systemized phase or in a harvest phase, we're going to talk about those in a second. It can feel like what's wrong with me that I am struggling so badly. Whereas if you know that you're in the experiment and fail phase of your offer of your business, you don't make any of those failures mean anything about you. Okay. You just get back to it. You're like experiment number 96. This is all of the evidence that we collected from that. This is what works. This is what didn't, right? You're just experimenting and failing and there's nothing wrong with that. It's the cost of doing business. Okay. So no, if you're in experimenting and failing, I am right about in it. You guys, I just got out of a harvest phase, which felt so lovely, sold out my uh, happening sessions for the first time. After going through all of the experimenting and failing in the other launches, I finally got to reap that harvest. It felt amazing. But now you guys, there are some other things that are happening behind the scenes, new offers coming, new formats coming, new types of clients that I'm going to be working with. And I am about to fall on my face and I can't wait because I know that that is just phase two in a series of many phases that gets me to that harvest again. Okay. So when you know that you can just be where you're at. So phase number three is evaluate. Evaluate is the only time that I recommend you look at your past. It's the best time to ask if something is working or not. And it's the best time to pivot or change your mind or change your plan. A lot of clients will be in this experimenting and failing phase where they're supposed to be doing their plan. They're supposed to be executing their plan. They're trying the things that they committed to trying. And while they're trying it, or even before they're trying it, they're asking questions like, I don't know, is this going to work or not? And I'm like, hey guys, what do you think the best way is to know if something's going to work or not? To do it, to experiment, to fail, right? And it's not until we have our sample size that we've committed to. It's not until we've gone through our plan for the month that we get to ask that question, is this working or not? Right? So be careful if you want to be, if you're someone who tends to want to evaluate your business all of the time, it's not healthy for a long-term business. It's really just showing that you are in scarcity and you're trying to feel better by trying to 
predict the future by trying to know if something's going to work before you've tested to see if it's going to work or not. So what I recommend here is when you're in season two of experimenting and failing, you decide how long you're going to experiment, how many tests you're going to do of whatever you're trying out, whether it's, oh, I'm committing to um, pitching 50 podcasts to be a guest on it until you have done those pitches and you've pitched all 50, you can't know whether your script of pitching or your style of pitching is working or not. And then you can evaluate it once you get to the end of that. Right. Um, but same thing with your offer. Some people will offer it to like three people and then they'll say no, but they committed to offering it to a hundred people, but by three, they're feeling discouraged and they're like, maybe this isn't the right offer. Maybe I should change it. And they change it and they change it and they change it. And they never get that sample size that that is large enough to kind of know they haven't worked out the kinks of a plan that might have been really great, an offer that might have been really great. They just hadn't given themselves enough leeway to experiment and fail. Okay. So evaluating this is the time when you're going to ask yourself the simple questions is this working? Is it not? What do I? want to learn here? What do I want to do differently? Um, and then you can go back and do the planning, deciding and planning. So that these first three phases are kind of a cycle that you're going to go through pretty frequently. Um, but be clear about which one you're meant to be in at the time. So decide and plan, then experiment and fail, then evaluate, and then you make new decisions, then you experiment again, and then you evaluate. Um, the hapsters, I have them do this pretty much every month, but we're not deciding and planning on a whole level for our whole business every month. We have our, our business plan and our goals for the whole year. And we're just deciding and planning on like what specifically is we're working on this month. Okay. Now growth phase number four is very uncomfortable for a lot of you. And that one is feel. Sometimes your work is to just fail your damn feels. You guys, I know everyone wants to punch me in the face when I tell them this. The work isn't to improve yet or get over it or to be productive or to find the thought that's going to make you feel better so that you can be productive, right? Sometimes the work is for you to just process the fact that you did fail and it sucked. Like when I did my first launch after, um, maternity leave. I was bummed because I wanted that to be the sold out one. And it wasn't. And while I know in hindsight now that I'm like, Oh, of course it was meant to be three launches before I sold out. And I learned so much by constraining and not overselling or selling people after it had started. And I just, I let it be what it was but I had to really feel that. And I had to be like, oh, okay, I'm willing to be disappointed. And if you're never willing to go through this phase of growth where you feel the feelings of failure or of disappointment or whatever negative emotion it comes up for you, shame, whatever that is, if you're not willing to feel it, probably you're going to stop taking risks. Because when you are willing to feel something and you do make a habit of processing your emotions, you also make a habit of showing yourself that there's nothing really to be scared of because you come out on the other side and you didn't die, right? And if you don't incorporate feeling into business, it seems like it's an unnecessary, like, I don't have time for this thing. You're going to just, you're going to shy away from the risks and the big moves that you need to make in your business to get to that next level. Okay. And if you're curious and you're like, well, I don't even know where to start. How do I feel? Do I just, I need to just like pump up some like Sinead O'Connor and like, <laughs> I don't cry. I, there is a process for feeling your emotions. Yes. But, um, and we, I can work on that with you. So reach out to me if you don't know how to do any of these phases and you want to go more in depth. All right. Growth phase number five. Um, oh yeah. And just as a note, when you are feeling it's because you've added to that bucket of fails, you, you can say like, it's another uh, just little 
trigger point that shows you, oh, I am in the feeling stage. This is where I'm supposed to be. I did experimenting and failing right. Like I set out to create a maternity leave and then that was what I wanted to do. Right. And I do a annual evaluation of my year. I call it an annual report and I'm going to be doing one next year. But if you haven't listened to that episode, go listen to that. I tell you everything about, um, all of the fails that I collected, all of the evaluations, all of the systems, and a lot of the feelings. And what was so amazing about being in this feel stage of looking at my annual report and feeling the positive emotions and the negative emotions and reflecting and really just like being there was that I got to see where I stayed in my growth phase, even when it was uncomfortable. And I just was willing to go through all of that, whatever it takes, however many times I need to go through the experiment and fail or the evaluate or the feel I'm here for it. Are you here for it? Okay. Next phase is systemize. So a lot of clients come to me and they want to just jump right into systemize phase. And this might be right for you. There are I, definitely a handful of people in happening sessions who are ready for this. This means you're at the place where you maybe have done a couple of cycles in your business of deciding and planning, experimenting and failing, evaluating, and you've just been like, go, go, going and kind of hustling and grinding. And in the beginning, especially going to your first hundred K, you got to do that. You're kind of just throwing spaghetti at the wall, seeing what sticks you're, um, you know, you're accepting all sorts of clients and all sorts of payments and just figuring out what works in a messy way. And then now you're like, okay, I have clients. I have proof that people want what I am selling. I have maybe more money, but less time. So now this is the indicator that it's time to go into systemized uh, mode where your goals are to improve delivery, to automate, to prep for scaling, to make your offer more scalable in general, whether it means um, making sure the pricing is tweaked, making sure your um, your onboarding is tight, your offboarding is tight, that you are putting in hiring or putting in different people in order to take yourself out of the process a little bit more. Systemizing that we do in happening sessions includes uh, training on you need a budget, making sure that you are um, not just making decisions for your business emotionally and then trying to over earn to compensate for that decision. Uh, instead that you are systemizing in a way where you're planning for investments, where you are making sure that your expenses are lowered and, or your revenue is consistent so that you can pay yourself more consistently so that you can increase those profit margins. Right. And then also making sure, like I mentioned, that you're improving delivery. So as you continue to grow your business, your delivery should get better. The results for your clients should get better. The quality of your product and service should get better. And a lot of that comes with adding systems in. We do hapster scheduling. So that's a huge thing where you are making sure that not only are your money and your processes tight for your business and for your clients, but they're also tight for your personal life so that you can make sure that you are not growing your problems as you're growing your business and that you are able to really um, have a well-oiled machine. We always say over here, master before you multiply. So that this might be the last phase that you do before you bring on another offer or start another branch of your business. I know that a lot of my clients are in, um, this one of the later phases that we're going to be talking about in a second of, uh, burning things down and rebuilding things or starting something from scratch again. And they are thick in the final stages of the systemized phase so that they can just get all of that done so that they know that they have the clean headspace to move into all those other more uncomfortable phases. So systemized can be a really fun phase. Honestly, to me, it feels like just 
the nerd in me like loves it. I love the numbers organizing. It's kind of like this new, new age therapy where people are love loving decluttering and they're all, this is like kind of, um, organizing for your brain and for your business the systemized phase. Okay. The next phase is the harvest phase. And I think what's most important to know about this, if you're in this phase of your business, you know, you know that you've done the work, you've done all of these other phases to get here. You've systemized, you have done the experimenting and failing and the deciding and planning. You've evaluated time and time again, you've gotten better. You felt your feelings, and now you are reaping the harvest. You've planted those seeds. You were working out and having all these backbreaking labor of like tilling the soil of your business. And now you get, it's harvest season. You get to eat what you planted. You get to take money out of your business, pay yourself. You get to, um, you know, really, really reap all of the hard work that you've put in. And you'll know when you're in it, but what I think is so important to know is that there is a phase of harvesting. And oftentimes I see my clients compare themselves when they're in the experimenting and failing phase to someone else, a peer or a mentor that's in the harvest phase. And this is so toxic. And I never want you guys doing this because if you are looking and you're saying, well, what's wrong with me? They're selling out their offer and I'm not. To me, I just know when someone else is selling their offer and I'm not, they just have gone through the other phases more often and or more efficiently than I have. And that's it. It's not a problem. I just am not yet in the harvest phase. I haven't done the work yet to have, you know, the corn be sprouting out of the ground, right? If I don't see corn, how am I expected to like go in and have a feast? Like it doesn't make sense, right? Have I done the whole process? What, what is missing yet? So I think what's most important about this phase, you'll know it when you're in it, but if you're not in it, knowing that it exists and that other people may be in it, and not to compare yourself to them is really, really helpful for you to just put your eyes on your own paper and be where you're at. Okay. Next phase is the burn phase. Okay. This phase is very uncomfortable. This is something that you might do when things get too comfy in your business. You've systemized, everything is really good and it's working, but what got you here is not going to get you there. This is when you realize that, all right, I built a brand based on who I was maybe 10, 15 years ago. I'm kind of going through a bit of a burning phase myself where what's happening was something that a brand that I created when I was 23, I think, and I am 35 now. It was, Hapsters was something that really, I think, identified with my audience at the time. It was all about happiness experiments. That's not really who I'm serving anymore. And while I've been on autopilot because branding was not anywhere near top priority of my list. Now I'm thinking about the next level of my business. I'm thinking about my million dollar business. I'm thinking about other offers outside of happening sessions and where happening sessions fits in. And I'm like, do I want that to be my brand? You know, I changed my podcast from the what's happening podcast to sincerely future you. I just changed my Instagram handle from what's happening with Jess to Jess McKinley Wayno, right? I'm maturing in a way in my business. And what that requires is burning some things down. And this can be such an uncomfortable phase, but if you're not willing to go through this phase, you will likely never get to a million dollars. Because there is a certain point that you'll hit in your business where everything that got you to six figures, maybe even multiple six figures is not going to get you to that next level. And forget it. If you want to go from seven figures to eight figures, you need to be willing to burn down a million dollars that it just gets harder and harder to do. You want to go from 10 million to a hundred million. There's not that many people that feel comfortable burning $10 million and saying, nope. I'm willing to lose all of this, to mess all of this up, to blow it up, to rebuild a hundred million dollar business, 
right? And so good is the enemy of great. And when you're looking to get to that next level, are you willing to go through this burn phase where things are comfy and you're st- just something inside you is saying, I don't want this anymore. This isn't me anymore. I'm ready for the next level. But getting to that next level, like, I don't know. I don't really play video games, but I was going to make a video game analogy. It's like, you just have to like jump into this, like, like in Mario, right? You have to go down that tunnel. You don't know what board is going to be down that next tunnel. It's kind of scary, right? You just got to the end. It was like, there's clouds here. And then you get down and it's like fireboard. And you're like, what the did I do? Sorry. Maybe we can bleep me out. I I really think that it is important for you to know that this season of growth exists and that it's really important if you do want to get your business to that next level. I'm in a bit of a burning phase. Not entirely. Don't worry. Happening Sessions is going nowhere. but, But in terms of branding, in terms of me getting to that next level, I'm really thinking about intentionally what parts of my business I want to burn down in order to build instead of just layering things on top, on top, on top. I want it to be clean. I want it to stand on its own. Okay. And then finally the rebirth phase. So this is the part that you're in after you burn things down. And after you're at that next level, I remember when I went through certification, it was a burning phase as well. It was me re-deciding what standards I wanted to have as a coach and what practices I wanted to have. And I was coaching people while I was learning a new way of coaching. And it was so uncomfortable because I was like, am I even a good coach? I don't know. He started to question everything. It felt so confusing. Should I just like refund all of my clients? Like I remember having moments like that, just wrapping myself in my comforter, and like Mark being like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I failed my certification and I have five more clients that I have to coach today. And I just don't feel qualified. Right. But this is an important phase of everybody's business, right? You're in the failure collection, but it's almost the burn phase is a little bit different because it's, you went into it so intentionally knowing that you have to, um, upheaval, like you have to discard everything that was working to get to that next level. And I was coaching. I was almost booked out before I got certified. And now I wanted to get to that next level. It was requiring question myself, even though things were working, right? And the rebirth phase, this final phase is when you're going to ask yourself those big identity questions. You're saying, who do I want to be? Who is who is, what is my business? What are the core values here? How, what, what, what legacy do we want to leave? You, this is the phase where you let other people be confused. I don't know for me too, when I decided to become a fitness coach, that was such a huge part of my journey. And I just started to really prioritize my health. The people that I had been spending time with up until that point were not like, that wasn't who they knew me to be. That wasn't who they were. And they were really confused. And I had to let them be confused about that. When I decided I was going to be a life coach and that was going to be the way that I was going to support me and my child when I was a newly single mom, people were confused. I had burned down my marriage. I had burned down my life. Things that actually were working, they were working on some level, but like there was a ceiling there. And I knew that if I wanted the big life that I really wanted, there were some really painful processes I needed to go through, but I knew that there was rebirth on the other side of it. So are you willing here to ask yourself big identity questions that might rock you to your core and might make you question everything, but kind of like through the ashes rises the Phoenix, let other people be confused until they get to see who you are and how colorful and how bright and how amazing you are. It wasn't until, and I talked about this on the podcast episodes ago, it wasn't until I was listening to my dad's speech at my wedding, getting remarried to Mark, that I really had a moment to reflect on how hard it was when other people were doubting 
like, are you sure you know what you're doing and you're going to get into this new relationship and you're doing all this and it feels fast and other people just couldn't see it. You need to have that vision for yourself. And this is where it's going to require lots of practice, believing in new things. You might need to find a new community. Maybe you might need to be putting blinders on to what everybody else is doing. And you need to put some like earplugs into what everybody else is saying. This rebirth is about you and you alone. And I don't recommend you go around asking people what they think or for validation or for feedback at all, or what do you think I should do? This is a time to look inward, to ask yourself the questions and to practice believing in your vision until it becomes a reality in front of you. Okay. So remember, these are the eight phases that I see. These are just my own ways of categorizing what I see my clients go through, what I've seen myself go through. Um, but know for yourself what you're in right now. I'm just going to give you one last example to leave you with. In 2021, I asked that high quality question, what is my growth right now? Will this decision evolve me or get me closer to the skill and self-concept I wanted to gain? And in 2021, my growth was to sell out. It was to really do that systemizing and to get all the way there to stretch my capacity. But then in 2022, my growth was to constrain. It was to begin to evaluate and to reevaluate. And through that constraint, I had to say no to quick money to the non-ideal clients, no to lots of one-on-one clients that wanted to come and hand me $10,000. And I had to say no, but that was informed by me saying, what was my growth right now for the business? I had to say no to other opportunities that were distracting me from my season, which was to systemize happening sessions. This last launch, I was harvesting. Selling out was not a product of me being a superstar snowflake. It was a product of me having gone through the other seasons to reap this harvest. So just as it's important to know your own season, remember your mentors and peers are going through their own season. We do not compare and despair. It's not useful. I really hope that this episode was helpful for you. And I want to know what season are you in? What is your growth? Can you find calm now that you know your season is supposed to have lots of fails? Maybe please come and connect with me or leave a review on the show. If this episode was really helpful to you, share it with me and tag me on Instagram at Jess McKinley Wayno. And then come if you're really confused, cause I just rocked your world. Come and get coaching live with me on April 11th at 1 p.m. I'm going to have the link up shortly. It should be up by the time you're listening to this on my Instagram. And it will also be in the show notes. I cannot wait to coach you. And I cannot wait for you to go through all of the seasons with more calm and more self-awareness, knowing that exactly where you're at is exactly where you are supposed to be. Have a beautiful weekend. Hey, hapsters. If you want to learn more about today's topic, head over to what's happening.com forward slash podcast. That's what's happening. W H A T S H A P P Y N I N G.com forward slash podcast. If you're a business owner and you're resonating with what we talk about here, what are you even doing? Come hang out with me over where the party's at on Instagram at what's happening. W Jess. Again, that's happy. H-A-P-P-Y-N-I-N-G and book a discovery call to see if coaching is your next best step.